Today in the Smart Wood Shop, I'm going to show you how to make this handle. This is the handle that you have seen on all of my jigs and fixtures in the shop that require a handle. Actually, I'm not going to show you how to make the handle. I'm going to show you how to make and use a template so that you can make as many of these handles as you need. I'm Ron Polk, and this is the Smart Wood Shop. If you want to get a detailed set of plans to build a smart wood shop for yourself or one of my smart workbenches, you can click on the link in the description of this video down below where you can purchase a set of plans and download them instantaneously 24-7, 365. I already have this template that I made and I've made quite a few handles with it and it works pretty good but I have come up with an idea that I think will improve it. So I thought in today's video, I'd go ahead and make that with you. 12 millimeter thick plywood, 190 millimeters wide, 400 millimeters long. I'm also going to use a piece of three quarter that I'm gonna put on this when we're getting close to the end. But to start with, I wanna make the shape of this template on the end here. Two square lines. I'm gonna make one down from the top 105 millimeters 150 millimeters from this edge to the line so again i've got a line 105 down and a line 150 millimeters from the edge i want to make two pilot holes these pilot holes are going to be the location of the tip of this inch and a half or 40 millimeter bit which will create the both ends of the handhold of the handle the first pilot hole Closest to the edge, I'm going to make it 75 millimeters down and 38 millimeters in from the edge. Take my scratch all and make a nice location point or pilot hole. The second hole, the one that's going to be closer to the top because this handle or the grab section is at an angle for a good ergonomic grip. That pilot hole is going to be 45 millimeters down from the top and 88 millimeters in from the edge. Put a nice pilot hole in there. So figuring out angles and where exactly to cut that, don't need to bother with it. Once we have these pilot holes, we've got the exact location, angle, everything we need to do the grab section of the handle. To figure out the main curve and then the reverse curve, Rather than using a compass and any kind of math to figure it out, I'm just going to use this uh, two and a half quart bucket I have. The diameter on it is exactly the same as a one gallon paint can, which is what I used to make the original handle. And the measurement on that is about, oh, six and five eighths or about uh, 68 millimeters. It's not that critical. This is a little bit visual. Obviously, it, it works really well. It's got the shape I want, but don't worry if yours is slightly different. If I use the opposite end, which is a smaller diameter, I could still come up with a pretty nice handle. I've got the top edge of my little pail here down about two millimeters, and I've got it just bumping on that line we made. And now I'm gonna take a pencil and I'm gonna trace that. I'll just trace it beyond what I actually need. So now I have this curvature here that goes all the way from this edge. It's kind of flat here and then it picks up with this curvature and goes over and it goes down past where I'm going to reverse it. So I've got a nice arc here. Now I'm going to take the same one gallon paint can or this uh, empty pail in my case and I'm going to slip it over to this side where the other arc comes through and I'm going to butt it up to that first arc. And I'm just going to rotate it around until it looks good and, and curves off the other side. So I'm, I'm getting this nice serpentine shape here. I'm actually not going down to the tip of this line. I'm leaving eight millimeters up from that, from this lower line. Main thing is I want this nice shape to follow through. I don't want it to step or anything. So I've got that. I've rotated it around and now I'm going to make I'm going to trace through the previous arc and reverse it. So now I have this nice 
uh, fluid shape that I can now take my jigsaw and take it off almost to the line. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut it as carefully as I can. I'm going to leave the line because I'm going to go to the sander to finish it up and get it nice and clean. Next I'll drill the 40 millimeter or half inch holes. I'll start by going ahead and drilling those pilot holes all the way through so that I can drill those holes from the top and the back to get a nice clean cut. Next I'll take a straight edge and I'm going to just go to the cutouts here and I'm going to connect the dots basically top and bottom so that I can cut those out with my jigsaw as well. Now it's time to go over to the sander and clean it up. With the template all cut out and sanded, ready to go, I'm going to take a piece of 18 millimeter ply. It's 190 millimeters wide. It matches the width of the template and 195 millimeters long. What I'm going to do is attach it to this template right to that line that we made that was 105 millimeters down from the top. This is going to be to butt the material up again. So I'm going to go ahead and line it up with that and put some glue on it and a few pin nails to hold it in place. It's a per permanent part of the jig that we're making. The pattern is complete. Let's see how it works. I've created a couple of blanks that are slightly larger than the finished handle we need. So these are about 200 millimeters long and 110 millimeters wide. What I'm going to do is attach the template to the top of it with a couple of screws and then I've made it longer so that I could clamp this down and be able to run my router on it without it slipping around on me which was one of the problems I was having with this one. It was, there was really no way to clamp it. To cut the handle out, I'm gonna use my DeWalt battery operated router. It's a plunge router so I can make multiple passes and keep uh, lowering it down. I don't wanna make this cut all at once. Because it's limited to a quarter inch uh, for this particular router, I'm using a quarter inch uh, upcut spiral bit. And again, I'm gonna creep into it, make at least three, maybe four, even five passes. Two handles ready to be put to use just that quick and they'll be exactly the same every time because of the little bit of extra time we took to make this template which now can be stored and used over and over again. I am a really big fan of pattern routing. I continue to say that a router is the most versatile saw that a carpenter has at his or her disposal. If you like these woodworking tips 
then be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you want to join the Smart Woodshop family, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you'll know when I put up a new video. And if you want to support the channel, support what we do here and encourage me to make more videos, you can use our Amazon link where you can purchase the tools and materials that you see me use here in the Smart Woodshop. They will share a little bit with us, but not charge you any extra. Thanks for dropping into the Smart Woodshop. You stay safe and have a great day.